Warning, warning. Proceed with caution. Hazardous conditions ahead. Slippery when wet. Watch for falling objects. Prepare yourself for entering the mind and thoughts of Mark Herman Schmidt. 20 minutes to leave your mark. All right. Fresh off the press. <laughs> We're going to jump right in. I liked how we did the last one. First of all, takebackyourlifenow.net. Go check it out. Keep your New Year's resolutions going. FBC 2020 is the code. Get 20% off anything they have to offer. It's Bobby and Liz Martinez, and it's a 30, 60 day, 90 day, or even just like a 12 week uh, program as well, where you're able to uh, get some ideas on working out. They kind of put everything together for you. They meet with you and all that fun stuff. So uh, we're gonna jump right in. We got Tony. We got Tony. Tony yeah. Montoya. I just came up with a great meme idea. I don't know why I almost called you Tony. Um, We got Mark Herbert Schmidt. Go ahead with your meme idea. So for, you know, we were talking about you make your own poster art for your own podcast. Mm -hmm. I want to make one with um, Guy Pierce from Memento. Oh, 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 yeah. And his tattoo tattoo note says takebackyourlife.com. (laughs) <laughs> take back take, take back your life dot, dot net or dot net but yeah i want to throw that out there just so that you guys don't get confused and i don't get sued later by bobby and liz which i won't all right we got mark herbert schmidt here mark 20 minutes to leave your mark we had a half the hour last time this might this might go over 20 minutes a little bit but we're, we're pretty warmed up so we feel like this 20 minutes is going to be jam-packed and beautiful for you we're uh we're not editing this another live episode even though it is going to be edited for like post-production for you can hear it to your ears but i'm not editing this okay so when i called mark tony i'm keeping it in there got to i don't care i don't care either okay so best halftime show ever so who would you pick to do the best halftime show what ever? a good one this is gonna hit well with uh because super bowl is coming up what do you think ahead mark uh see Mark won this the other day, or 2019, most prepared, always has a list, ready to roll. He already was looking in, into the future, and he knew that the Super Bowl's coming up. Best halftime show. Now, are we being funny or are we being serious? I think that... Let's go funny and serious. I think it's you don't have a choice to go hand in hand. Like If you want the best, it's going to be funny, too. <laughs> okay. Well, for me, one of my favorite memories was when... Bruce Springsteen, this is this is this is legit. This is for sure. Halftime show, he slid across the stage, cameras everywhere, and he slid. His crotch hit the camera, and he just like he he, he kept he he over he misjudged his slide, and he kept sliding, 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 and crotch right into the camera. Gave a funny look, popped up, and kept kept singing and dancing. Sometimes you got to warp to the final boss. <laughs> for me, uh, I think. An awesome one would be. I just, it's just, I just think that if you could, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe mine will inspire yours. Go. Mine's clearly joking. Okay, <laughs> okay, go with that, dude. Eiffel sixty five is the opener. Mighty Mighty Boston's is the second one, and Chumba Wumba headlining it, dude. With I get knocked out. <laughs> Tub thumper. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How can you top that? Coldplay. Just not Coldplay st- is amazing live. Yeah, I do like Coldplay. They get a bad rap. Th- their songs get stuck in my head. I got to listen to them. They're, they play it on the Safeway Network all the time. And so you kind of get stuck. You, you know, but- I've seen them live multiple times. They're really good. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So you, you're actually are, you're a Coldplay uh, person. Yeah, they're good. Who's- I wouldn't name my kid Apple, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Best halftime show. I just think it'd be funny if uh, if you got out there, karaoke in style. Dude. And I would just, love that. That If I had a magic wand, it'd be uh, you'd be headlining it, and they'd be like, who is this guy? Dude, I'd come rolling out on the drive in reverse on a pickup truck and get everybody to rock to the crocodile rock, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I still laugh at that story. I'm not editing this, so we're not going to tell that story. But we all know. But that one's a funny, stinking story. Of that, uh, we had 
Uh, Mark and I were sharing. We're, I'm just going to say it. So Brian came on the podcast and uh, Shearson and Mark remembered the a high school senior a, party, high school senior party, and uh, he told a story that was absolutely uh, funny. Where I I can't share it, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but find me okay if you see me find me or find mark we'll tell you that story we don't want to air it just because i do enjoy brian a ton and it's it's one of those funny stories that i'll have to ask his permission first you had to have been there and 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 he would probably say well travis probably shouldn't i don't know maybe or he he surprises me every time it's either yeah go for it or, and i'm like okay or no, probably should leave that off. So, out of respect for him, I'm not going to say anything. Classmates 2000. What's that mean? Oh, well, because the you know the reunion thing's coming up. Yes. I was, I was thinking about, like, what are some funny stories? You know, we were talking about the senior party. What are some funny stories and who are some people that are very memorable? Yeah. And then I was always thinking about... We all have that person that just makes our spidey senses go crazy. Yes, we all have that one person. You know, and um, I was at the Lee one time, and I was hanging out with uh, Lance and I think Butch at the time. Uh huh. And somebody brought up the spidey sense. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and Lance is like, dude, don't say his name three times. He's like <laughs> Beetlejuice, dude. <laughs> He's like, he'll just appear out of nowhere. And we're all laughing. We're like, yeah, whatever, right? And then somebody says his name again. He's like, I'm serious, man. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it, man. And so everybody's kind of so like. So you're saying this dude's name. We're not going to say it, but, but you're yeah, saying this dude's name. Yeah. And okay. so it's just like. Don't push the button. Don't push the button. And you see that person just Ready slowly to push going to button. push that button. And he's like, I'm serious, man. Don't do it. And then one of them drops it third time. 30 seconds later, he walks right in the bar, and I'm like, dude, no way, man. That, that is insane. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, we all have those friends or those former friends uh, where the spidey senses go off. I don't know where people – it's it's so crazy to – I don't know if you guys have ever done this. Please do this. Please just go do this right now, tonight. Write yourself a note. But go find an old uh, – like class picture, like your third or fourth or sixth grade class picture, and just look at it and think to yourself, man. And you can kind of like point out the people that you see, and you're like, this person's doing this now, this person's doing this now. It's so crazy to think that we're, we were all in the same, in a sense, level playing field. And then now, where are people now? It's yeah. just nuts. To it's me. like it, the losers club. So you got one uh, telling a story. Here's I want to do a disclaimer real quick, everybody. I want to go to this reunion. I'm excited to go to this reunion. I am not planning this reunion. Okay, I I, I feel like maybe online it kind of got a little skewed. I did volunteer to get the word out to add people to the. I, I was given admin antri- uh, access to the. I was given admin access to the Facebook page. Only because I keep in contact with a lot of people. And so if so anyone was missed, I would just add them to the group. I did the best I could. I went through as many friends as I, uh, pro- profiles as I could to go kind of like add them in, add them in. But I may have missed a few. But I'm not planning the the 20 year reunion. And I was kind of like, I think it kind of people were thinking I was. I was never a class president. I was never a treasurer. I was never a historian. I never class clown. Do you have the class clown uh, planet? No. You do you invite them to go? Yes, absolutely. But you don't invite the class. You don't say, "Hey, class clown, plan our twenty year reunion," because they have a class clown for a reason, you know. So I'm not. I'm not hey, gonna. Man. Yeah. You know, like with like CERN and everything going on, dude. Like Mandel effect might just happen, and you might just become the class president. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, but we do have another story about somebody. We're going to not say the name, Mark. Okay. But we are going to say that, that it's a female. And if anyone knows this story, there's probably five people in the world that know the story. 
but share the story about this person that was in our class. Okay, so I'll let you come up with a female name just for the hell of it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Strawberry Fields McLander Patch. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. I don't know. Uh, Monica. Okay, Monica. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> So, um, I wasn't at this party, but, um, Brian LeBeau was, and he was telling me about it and he's like, it was, it was somebody that didn't go out and party all the time, but it was somebody you can never really say anything bad about just good person. They right. just weren't a partier, right, but they right. didn't need alcohol to be good company. Smart person too. Yeah. 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 Didn't need alcohol to be good company. They're just, you know, can't say a bad word. Can't, I can't say anything bad about them. But anyway, Brian's at this party, and he finally gets to see this person just let loose and just relax and just enjoy en- enjoy the enjoy, night. Enjoy, enjoy the enjoy in a the- way that he's never seen it before. Exactly for this person. And so he's just like, he's like, "Hey, Monica," he's like, "Salsa dance." And so Monica's like all tuned up and yeah. just starts salsa dancing, and then he just doesn't doesn't skip a beat. Just immediately, he's like, "Hey, Monica, salsa dancing." She starts to salsa dancing, and he's like, hey, Monica, do a backflip. No hesitation. She tries to do a backflip, and her body just freaks out, <laughs> and it's like Mary Catherine Gallagher <laughs> spilling into a bunch of chairs. She backpedals and, like, I think falls into some oh. dresser, and he used to just show this video, and we just crack up, and then he forgot his cell phone and his work jeans, and it went, and it through, went the wash, through the wash, and Ugh. before YouTube was big, we didn't get a chance to put it out there. Uh, two things on that one. That's hilarious. Uh, we have a, I've got a friend. It's not in our, in our class. Burrito. We talk about him on Mike on the Mic. And one day, like years ago, he's kind of a larger proportion guy. He's like, I could jump over that table. Like, it was like a beer pong table. It was like a plywood table. And they're like, no, no. He goes, I'm athletic enough. I can jump over that table. And he ran and jumped. And luckily, someone got it on camera. He got halfway through that table, came straight down through it, and broke it. Nice. <laughs> it's now one of our gifts that we get it, that we awesome. that we send out. <laughs> it's so it's so funny. Um, second thing I was going to say on that is, have you ever, I've, I got a brand new iPod shuffle, like back in the day, I don't know if it was a shuffle, it had like, it had like the screen, right? Remember the screen? And I worked night crew and like two weeks in, I put it through the wash. So mad. Have you ever damaged anything that was like of decent value, new that you accidentally put, put it through the wash? Yeah. Or done or, or broke it within like the first two Oh, yeah, Weeks. yeah. So, you know that ab coaster where it was like that ab machine where you got those two pads that you rest your elbows on, you got the handles, yeah. and then you have that uh, pad you have your knees on, and you glide in that um, upward angle? Yes. And it's like doing crunches, but it, it's really good. Did you get it on a late night? Like, you ordered it kind of a thing? No, I I found one on um, Craigslist, and I was like, I always want to get one of those because the isolation's killer. Um, still got it, but I was so pumped. I found it in Olympia. And I was like, dude, I'm finally going to own this thing, man. I'm like, going to get the eight pack again, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm pumped. I drive all the way over there. I think I paid like 300 bucks for it, in which was a good deal at the time. Right. It was like brand new condition. Yeah. I'm driving and I wasn't really familiar with Olympia. And there was a spot, you know, when you're driving, you're like, oh crap, I'm going to miss my exit. Yeah. And then you have to make that executive decision. Like I either got to, I'm going to be five to 10 minutes out and loop back around at some point i had it strapped down the back of my truck and i wasn't sure if i was taking the right exit and it the alternative took me into a parking garage right Uh. i drive into the parking garage and on my way out even though there's that little speed bump thing yeah it raises me enough to hit the handle from that piece of equipment by maybe like a half of inch and it bent the frame. Oh. Before I even got to use it, dude. I wanted to cry, dude. I was so bummed out, man. Now I have to shim it up to do it. Like, I have to put a shim under it, dude. I never got to use that thing normal the way it was meant to be. It, that is so funny. That is the worst. I think I have, I think I've done that enough in my life where, obviously, with that, where whether it's like you can kind of see, you can learn from your mistakes, especially when you have kids. 
Kids are crazy. They'll break anything. They see something, they'll break it. They'll run into something, they'll smash into it on accident. They'll say it's on accident. But I think, you know, you were just trying to break that thing. Where you'll put something on a table and you'll go, you know what? I better move that. Because in five minutes, that's going to get broken. And I'm going to think to myself, I, it five minutes ago, mind. I thought about this. Mm-hmm. And I choose to keep it there. You pull it. Yeah, just take it away. If you ever get any, that's a spidey sense. If you ever get any red flag or spidey sense going that your kid could break it, just so you know, move it immediately because your kid's going to break it. You ever watch the show Titus back in the day? Yes. I love that show, yeah, dude. Yeah, it was really good. I got like all three seasons, but I only got like the third season on DVD. I couldn't find the other ones at uh-huh. the time. So I acquired it in another way. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix? Yeah. Totally chilled. <laughs> um but there's always those, you know, he has that inner monologue when he's kind of like in his Mork from Orc stage, you know what I mean? Right. And he's always talking and there's those flashbacks in black and white. And he's like, yeah, you know, I always had to learn the hard way growing up. And this is one of them situations where the kid, they learn the hard way, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I'll leave it out there if you want to break it, cool. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it backfires. It doesn't right. always screw me over. It screws you over. And right. so you see the flashback of Titus like with a fork going over by the outlet, right? <laughs> and the... The mom's like, oh, no, no. And he's like, no, honey. Just let him do it. <laughs> and then you hear him go, uh, and he goes, bet you'll never do that again. <laughs> hey, can we say this one? Can we say this guy's name on here? Or no? Yes or no? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you friends with him enough to where oh, you're yeah. okay with it? Mm-hmm. All right, Brian Huber. Dude, Huber got so many funny stories with that guy, man. <laughs> he's a character for sure. Um, my mom, she used to work at the pool. And before me and him started hanging out, he would just, like, be running around. Like, he'd be, like, shaking vending machines. And my mom's like, what's up with this guy, right? And then, like, <laughs> then he started hanging out with me. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, he acts all polite. He's super calm. Like, but she's like, he is wired at that swimming pool, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, we used to, like, he used to live at this apartment complex in Auburn. I think it was like Brittany Park or something back in the day. And he looked way older than me because he'd grow facial hair and stuff. And I still had that baby face like right out of high school. Right. So when he would like try to buy beer, I just, I didn't even drink, you know, like until I was like 20, I think was the first time I drank. And so he would just go buy beer. And I was like, I don't, I'm honestly okay if I don't drink. You know what I mean? It's not going right. to kill my. You can have fun no matter yeah. what. It's not going to kill my night. But he goes to buy a beer at one time at 7 Eleven and I'm just going there to buy junk food and stuff. And the guy's looking at the ID and he's like, he's doing the math in his head and he's like, 1982, he's like, carry the one, you know what I mean? Like he's doing all in his head. You can see it in his eyes. And Brian's like, yeah, man, 82 is cool. And the guy's like, dude, I'm sorry, man. It's been a long night. You know, my brain's just like fried. (laughs) He's like, sorry about that. And he's like, it's cool, man. And then he sells him the beer and I'm like still in the store and Brian walks out and I'm just going to walk out separately just because I don't want to draw any attention. Right. And then the guy's going selling, you know, alcohol to the next person and he's looking at their ID. Yeah. And his brain his brain's working a little bit better on the next one. Yeah. And as he's like checking their ID, I hear him go, Fuck, I just sold beer to a miner. Oh, <laughs> 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 I think Ugh. I'm pretty sure he used to go to the river, the Green River. Brian or yeah. this guy? I'm pretty okay. sure. I'm pretty sure it was Brian would go to the river with his potato gun when Nick Riedel, I think, first showed him how to make one. Yeah, and try to shoot fish in the river with a potato gun. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, dude! It's so funny how some of these people that we know, uh, if you, I, I remember catching. Griffin Eschpeter, we were seniors in high school, and I remember looking out the window in class one day, and he was just like on like TA and for Mavis walking around and delivering notes. And I'm, on one of the walkways outside where he's going from you know building to building, he finds a stick, and he picks picks up the stick. I mean, we're eighteen, and he picks up the stick. No one else is around, and he kind of like swashbuckles with it, like. As if no one's no one's watching. He he's has, a conductor in a band. No, he's just over there, just like waving around like it's a sword. And I just like 
He has no clue anyone's watching him right now. <laughs> he's like the Star Wars kid. Remember that video yeah, exactly. where he's like with the with the broomstick, and then they edit with lightsabers in there. <laughs> and it was like, and I remember going to that break the next, you know, next time we had break or whatever, and I saw him. I said, "How was that stick? How was that sword fight with that stick?" And he's like, "What?" And I go, <laughs> "I go, I was watching it." And he goes, "You saw that?" <laughs> you're like, I'm like, dude, yes. You're like. I was blessed with witnessing that. <laughs> hey, were you in newspaper? Who? who no, no. I, I delivered the Seattle Times for seven years, though, before I moved to Enumclaw. Are you serious? Yeah. What, like by bike or by oh, yeah, wagon or what? Dude, I was like I was like a billiard player with newspapers. I could bank it off a wall, <laughs> land it on the milk box, dude. So you took that paper boy like... Dude. Seriously. I, I was good, man. I'd be just... Straight up. Just Did you love that part of it? Was dude, it fun for you? My freshman year, I weighed 97 pounds, and I didn't even have a PE class. I ate out of the vending machine the entire year. All be- And all because you were just sweating it off. I got all my work. cardio doing the paper out, man. And just chucking Seattle it. Seattle Times, seven days a week, dude. And we, <laughs> me and my brother, we had two paper outs, so we had a <laughs> bunch of papers, man. Um, so... We're getting back into this list. The Walking Dead, Deep Fake, Mr. T, Majesty okay. Kingdom. Yeah, so isn't it the Master G? Isn't that his character in the kingdom? Oh, the dude with that has a lion that yeah, walks yeah. around? Oh, and he'd be Mr. T? Mr. T would be or he'd, deep faked on him. That's good. Because he talks all proper and stuff. Yeah. And if you just had Mr. T. Just like, talking all talking proper. Talking like, hey, woman. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Just like yeah. talking like that. It would be so funny. It'd be funnier. Yeah. It'd be funny to see him talk proper. Mr. T talk proper. Is that what you're saying? No, no. It'd be funnier to see the Madison other... talk like Mr. T. Oh, okay. Like thuggish and stuff. You know, yeah. like Clubber Lang when he's challenging Rocky and he yeah, yeah, yeah. disrespects Adrian. <laughs> the Walking Dead, Eugene, uh, Necrophilia, poor. Porno? Yeah. Dead meat barbecue? Is that all the same one? Uh, no, that just was like came to mind after okay, that. Okay, all right. So um, the way Eugene talks. Who's Eugene? Eugene's the smart guy with the mullet. Oh, yes. Okay. The way he talks. Like if he was like in an adult film and his dialogue was like talked like that, like the way, if he was talking dirty, but the way he talks, it would be priceless. It would be so <laughs> funny. Like the stuff that would come out of his mouth would just be making you laugh so hard. <laughs> Need you to make a lateral turn over to that, you know, like it would just be great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so dead meat barbecue. Dude, what, what are we talking about here? Why is there not like a barbecue joint called dead meat barbecue? All barbecue's dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, what if you said live meat? Would it be weird? I think people would be intrigued. Dude, we were eating... Uh, It'd be like Indiana Jones with the Temple of Doom. When when, we, when I went to uh, KP's house, uh, Kyle Pierce's house, for the fights last night, like the prelims, because he had dinner made and all this stuff, and they made steak. And no joke, we were eating right after, like pretty soon after the barber fight. Where she got freaking her head split open and there was just blood everywhere. And all I could think of was, I'm about to eat some medium rare steak soon after after watching all this. And it didn't sound like the most appealing. But uh but yeah, so dead meat barbecue and just uh the menu options would be interesting to read the menu. What would it be? What would I you know? What would you what would you like to see on the dead meat barbecue menu? I would be, I would fake everybody out. It'd all be about the names. The names would sell it. I would do I would do roadkill barbecue, and so I would. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be raccoon. It's yeah, gonna, yeah. you're going to have pork, but I would be like raccoon uh, i ninety ra- raccoon or something like that. So then, you're ordering the description is going to be. It's not really raccoon, but it would just sound fun. The steak to, sauces instead of a one, it'd be like i ninety. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I, I you know I, I'd say you know s- s- drown sewer rat, well, you know, and that's just chicken legs or something like that, like something fun and weird at the same time. Heinz four hundred five. <laughs> You're still stuck on these sauces. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, you work on the sauces names. I'll work on the meat names, and we're golden. Oh yeah, we're set. Golden shower, be a lemonade. Yep. <laughs> Do the menu like it's like it's like Dick's doesn't have the best food, but it's just the place to go. That's why it's popular. I, I like it. But you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's not like exceptional. Oh, I got gotcha. you. It's just, it's the place. I got gotcha. you. 
Or I would name all my dishes vegan names. That'd be funny. That's it. Vegan barbecue. And then when people would come in, it'd be like, like they'd get their feet, their food. Oh, what is this? Is this, to- this looks like real. Is this tofu? Tastes good. I'm like, oh, it's just a joke. No, it's just, it's ve- my last name's vegan. Vegan. Uh, so I just thought I'd go with my last name, you know, kind of like dicks and vegan. Yeah, yeah. And so. No, I like it. Um, it's like uh, Grandma's Boy, where he's like, do you guys have shots? Right. We do have shots of wheatgrass. <laughs> Is there like a bathroom here? Do I got to shit in a plant? <laughs> Grandma's boy. Uh, that wasn't with you. Was it pre-menopods? They said that was one of the greatest movies ever made was Grandma's boy. Oh, it's amazing. And it, didn't it get bad reviews? Yes. It's amazing though. That's why I never listen to reviews. I go always, I'm like, I will not listen to them because movies like that are, those are so amazing cult classics. You know, just like, it's like Big Lebowski. Here's a recommend. Here's a recommend. Have you seen the movies that made us yet on Netflix? <laughs> it talks right now. It only has four. It has Home Alone, it has Die Hard, Ghostbusters, and Dirty Dancing, and it's like an hour long interviewing some of the actors, directors, editors, this and that of how the movies almost didn't get made. Like Home Alone, they had a budget of like twenty one mil, or no, they had like a budget of like ten mil, and they're at the fourteen mil part, and. Uh, a studio shut it down. Universal or whatever said, we're done with this. And the inside of Home Alone, like the house, was built in a gymnasium. It's not the actual house. That's cool. And and they, they took they actually took the house of the so they filmed all the outside shots. Mm-hmm. They took the floor plan and actually built the set. So you learn all this stuff. I love that kind of stuff. And they said that Home Alone, Roger Ebert and uh uh, Gene Siskel said one. They gave, they gave Home Alone one star, and it was like, "Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Craziness!" I don't. So. I never listen to critics because critics are always going to be biased. It's like, um, it's like it was good that Heath Ledger got the award for the Joker because it's like just because it's a comic book movie does not mean you should ignore how good of his acting was. Right, right. Because that was exceptional acting in that movie with that role. Right, I agree. Crazy thing with the Ghostbusters, you guys got to watch this. It also has toy, the toys that made us. So they have like Ghostbusters toys and they have like Barbie and all this stuff. But um, the crazy thing for uh, for Ghostbusters is it was written for Dan Aykroyd playing Ray. And then the Bill Murray character was John, Le- or, uh, John Belushi. Belushi. And then uh, the... What's the Harold bu- Ramis Egon? No, they didn't even have Egon. It was just going to be three Ghostbusters, and was it Winston? Winston was going to be Eddie Murphy, but Eddie Murphy was doing his own thing. He was he was booked. He couldn't make it. Yeah. John Belushi died, so he couldn't be in it. So they added Egon with Harold Ramis because he was brought on because of the Did he help film the, it or something like that. The director and the writer. Like Dan Aykroyd was like the Ghostbusters was originally when he wrote it was like in the future, outer space because he loves aliens. Not built, not at all in New York or any mm-hmm. of that. So they like we love it, but we got to rewrite it to where it would be more fun. And no, I and love that. watching. I love finding out stuff like that. You know, when you find out that um, Eric Stoltz was originally supposed to be Marty McFly and he actually filmed a bunch yeah. of scenes and yeah, then they yeah. got Michael J. Fox. From Family Ties, he finally got some time freed up, and he did it. And um, was it Tom Selleck was originally supposed to be Indiana Jones? Oh, really? Yeah. Um, there's just a lot of them, like, and you can't picture it, right? You can't picture these these iconic roles with somebody exactly. else in them. Um, but w- would we be saying, let's say Tom Selleck did get it? Yeah, you'd probably say the same thing about Her- no way Wait, Harrison, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, be. yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I can't picture that, dude. Han Solo. Pff, yeah. No, there's no way that guy could be Indiana yeah. Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever hear about the one that um, originally Leonardo DiCaprio was supposed to be in Boogie Nights and Mark Wahlberg was supposed to be in Titanic and they swap roles? No. You never heard that? That was that was legit? Yeah, they were supposed to do the opposite movies and they swapped roles. I can't even picture that. Yeah, it worked out for the best. It did. I can't even picture that. Dude, the best scene, my favorite scene in Boogie Nights is with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman where he's like, hey, Dirk, you like my car? <laughs> And he's all drunk, and then he tries to kiss him. 
and he's like, "Why would you do that, Scotty?" And he's like, "Oh man, I'm I'm sorry, man, Dirk. I'm just I'm just really drunk, man. I'm just really <laughs> drunk." And and then he like leaves. And he's like, "All right, man. Well, just don't do it again, you know." And he's like, "I'm gonna go back inside." And then and then he's in the steer. He's he's in the driver's seat of his car. And he just starts crying. He's like, I'm so stupid. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm so stupid. I'm an idiot. Because we've all been there. Oh, yeah. We've all been there. I've never tried to kiss some dude, but right. I've been an idiot. <laughs> oh, guys. Everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, last one, Mike Tyson time, li- or, uh, time travel machine. Did you? I forgot who he was fighting, but you got to look it up. Type in like... If, I'm sure if you type in Mike oh, Tyson, time traveler, the, the person with the smartphone in the crowd, yeah, it's a trip. But but is it? Is it a smartphone? They're holding it like they're like they're videotaping something, and it looks like a smartphone. You can't deny that it does not look it, like a it smartphone. It does, That's but it's crazy. I want to say they used to have back in the day these little handheld uh, video recorders because mm-hmm. I always wanted. It was like the spy thing, and so you know all these rich people got stuff like that, but. But uh, yeah, that was that's crazy. That's trippy. It looked like a camera. It did, it, and it was it the did. same shape and everything. And it's it's the idea that it got enough attention on YouTube to where people are like, I'm not saying I believe it, but I could definitely see that it looks very much like a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. You well, close this out. That's gonna close. Oh, am I closing oh, this yeah, out? Closing is this, this out. is this a three roll reversal? Yep. All right. Rock over Enum Claw. Rock on, Chicago. Uh, corn pops. Got to have my pops. Yep, dude. Just like those milk commercials. <laughs> Does a body good. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs>